Welcome to Don't Fear the Weight podcast with your host Vicky Masita, bringing together science and personal experience. Hi guys, welcome to the next episode of Don't Fear the Weight podcast. I am your host, as usual, Vicky Masita. I never change. I might change my t-shirt, but I never change my name. So today I have a really special guest um, for you. His name is Zach Fotheringham and he is a personal trainer, physique coach, prep coach, and I'll let him introduce himself for the remainder of it because he obviously knows a lot more about himself than I do. So um, hi Zach, how are you dude? How are you doing? How are you doing Vicky? All right? Not too bad at all, not too bad. So thanks for joining us today. Um, just So just in case the listeners don't know anything about you at all, do you want to give us a bit of a brief overview and your background and all the rest of it? Yeah, okay. So um, I've been personal training um, for the best part of about eight years now. Um, started it as soon as I came out of the army. Um, and obviously got my love for fitness uh, in the army. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, like I said, started personal training and got the bug for bodybuilding. Okay. Um, when I got got the bug for bodybuilding, um, a lot more. Um, well, I, I did a few competitions myself uh, within the UK BFF. Um, as some may know, some might not know. Um, I'm uh, my prep coach is Neil Hill. Okay. Um, a very close friend of mine. Um, he's prepped me for for all my comps, and. I've uh, done pretty well. Um, I'm very realistic. I understand that my physique, um, the best way for not um, my my physique isn't a pro physique, but I do it for the love. Okay, okay, I do it because I love doing what I do. Um, I've done okay as a as an amateur. I've uh, last year I won the UK BFF, the Scottish. The wow. year before that, I won the Cumbria. Um, so I've had my fair share of, um, of first places, but um, I got a. I started getting a big love for for prepping other people uh, for for competitions. Um, that's assisted and unassisted. Now um, I've recently had a very good success uh, from a athlete of mine, Dan Park, which uh, a lot may know. Mm-hmm. And, um, I've also last week had big success from my little brother. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, my little brother, my little brother uh, came to me about uh, twelve weeks ago and asked me if I would um, prep him for a, for a men's physique in the UK DBFA, and so I said yes. Obviously, he's my little brother. Um, the, the got him got him training on a regular basis. Started playing around with his with his nutrition. Um, crazy enough, did his first competition. Not only did he win his class, but he won the overalls. No way. <laughs> yeah, so, so he's he done he done pretty well. So, and I've got a fair few um, clients within the UK DBFA, uh, females and uh, males, um, and a range as well: bikini, men's physique, and obviously bodybuilding with Dan Park. And it's got a lot of in- it's got me a lot of interest uh, through. It's got me a lot. Of, it's drummed, drummed up a lot of business. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, I'm more of a. I'm more of. A, I, I generally get more of a buzz for my athletes being up there than what I did myself up there. So I, I you know, I turned it into a turned it into a career and you know I've been going both been going strong now as a prep coach, probably about three years now. Excellent. Excellent. So what I'm really interested about is that you were saying that you actually coach assisted and natural athletes, both of them. Yeah. Um, now, I've had a lot of conversations with a few people recently about the controversies about how they should be prepped differently. So let's have a, a chat about what you would do as in um, setting up a prep for an assisted as opposed to a natural. What kind of protocols would you use? But then again, what would you not use for a natural? Or what kind of implementations would you put in for a natural that you wouldn't necessarily use for an assisted bodybuilder? Okay, so so for a for a natural, the first thing the first thing I always do is is say, look, you it's gonna need to be over a longer period of time. Yeah. You know, you can't you can't go as harsh regards to everything really, nutrition, uh, cardio training. Um, because the obvious reasons that you've got you're more at risk of, of losing tissue mm. um, and that you know that that's is what it is um, regards to how I approach things differently no it's it's 
probably not what people are going to want to hear, but it really isn't that different. Mm. Apart from the fact that, apart from the fact that, obviously, if you're assisted, you're going to be able to take up a lot more um, calories, um, you know, a lot more protein through nitrogen balance and stuff. Um, but in regards to what approaches, you know, what what do you do differently? The main thing is just giving them a longer time, right? And and you know, um, yeah, just yeah, just giving them giving them giving them a longer uh, period of doing it, unless they are some crazy genetic freak, i.e. Dan Parks. Dan Parks, yeah. <laughs> um, he's, he is, he is like, I believe, and I've always told Dan, um, we're all, obviously this is going a bit philosophical now, but I think we're all born for a reason. Dan is born to be a bodybuilder. Like, yeah. he is. He, he is very gifted. I think for his first ever uh, comp, I think we prepped for seven weeks. Oh, my God. Right, okay. He prepped for seven weeks. Um, the change was amazing. Mm. But this guy, like, <sighs> what I like about Dan, I mean, we're going, I know we're going off the question now, but what I like about Dan is the fact that he lives and he breathes it. Um, he doesn't let his genetics play a key factor of, of winning. Yeah. He, he literally, this guy lives and breathes it. You know, if I told him that he needs to go outside at 10 o'clock at night and jump up, 50 times he'd be doing it every day religiously Brilliant. you know he, he he is like generally um like one of the most dedicated people um i've ever i've ever i've ever prepped and it helps mm. it does help it's like yes he's got genetics and people will say oh he is what he is because of his genetics and he looks how he looks because of his genetics in regards to muscle fullness and and the the, the rate that he grows um but you can't take this kid's hard work away from him. Mm. Um, so going back to the question on like, how do I do things differently? Unless they're a genetic freak, the main thing, the main thing that I always say is just giving them a longer time. And it really, it really is not much different than that. Mm. You know, I'd love to sit here and, 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 and go all sciencey on, you know, why you should what you're doing things different, but, Different approaches, you know, different diets, low carbs, high fats, uh, keto, um, um, high carb diets. They all work. They all work, but they all work for different, different on different people. You may have, you know, someone, um, yes, okay, and again, body type and genetics play a role, but you might have two people stood there. You might have two Dan Parks there stood there looking exactly the same, but they probably, they might need totally different um totally their, their body might react on totally different two diets mm. does that make does, does that make sense so yeah. um in regards to you know why do um you know so how, do, how do you figure that out then just obviously that's a, that's a really interesting thing that you just said that obviously two people can be two identical dan parks for example um but one person might need a high fat diet another one might need a high carb. how do you actually figure that out and pinpoint the, the macronutrient that they'll work better on Okay, so um, I always say, um, and I got this off, uh, got this off Neil. Um, whenever someone comes to me with a prep, whatever, if they come to me and say, "Look, I've got twelve weeks, or I've got sixteen weeks, or I've got twenty weeks," I always say, "Right, let's add on six weeks to that time frame." Right. Okay. But then, first six weeks, it's about learning how their body reacts to different foods. Um, you know, when they're tolerance with carbohydrates. Uh, can they lose weight on silly amounts of car carbohydrates? Um, and then once I've once I've got that six weeks, that six weeks is a great window for me to do that. And and if I'm honest with you, that is how that is how I judge what well, this is definitely going to be the diet. For, this is this is definitely going to be the diet for you because this is what's been working. Now you've got to remember that most of the people that come to me are normally well trained people. Mm. They're, they're not just someone who's just started the gym and gone, like, I want to do a competition. Because if that's the case, I'd be realistic with them and say, well, let's learn how to train first. Yeah. You know, let's learn how to train first. So um, I've already got a baseline from what they've told me through, like, through, through speaking to them, through, through the consultation at the start. They're going to tell me what their past six months of eating has been like. Mm. Um, from there, I'll assess where we start with a diet, i.e., you know, if someone's been taking a crazy amount, because uh, don't get me wrong, formulas um, on what someone's protein should be, what someone's 
uh, carbs should be what yes they're great they're great for um they're great for a start they're great for a start pace for a, for the everyday person but if someone comes to me says, well, this is what i've been doing oops, and they're relatively lean mm. but then i'll put their stuff in a calculator and it says they need to be doing something totally different what am I going to do? Am I going to do? Am I going to do what the calculator says, or am I going to work on what this dude's been doing for the last six months because yeah. it's working? Yeah. But exactly. For example, but for example, I've got a, I've got a, as a personal trainer, I've got a one to one client. Um, he came to me three years ago, uh, weighing, a, I think he was about fifty two to fifty three kg. This guy was, this guy, yeah, stick thin. Um, and three years down the line. Uh, today's check-in, I think he's something like 76 kg. Brilliant. 76 kg. Now, in no way, shape, or form, in this is this dude fat. Yeah. Okay, right. So, if you would have to, if you would have told me, if if I would have put all his stuff into a calculator and says this guy wants to put on weight, the 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 the, the standard put 500 extra calories into this 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 guy's and he'll grow. Okay, if I put an extra 500 calories to the calories that he should have been taking uh, way back when he started, this dude will still be 53, 53 kg. Yeah. Now, even if I was to put his stuff in now at 73 kg, this guy has to eat, this guy has to eat 6,000 calories a day to stay where he is now. Crazy, isn't it? But... If you tell me what how much protein he should be on according to protocols, he'd be on half of what he's having now. Mm. It all depends on individuals turnover, protein turnover, and, and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if that's gone off the question a little bit. No, no, but, it hasn't. It hasn't. You are you are explaining it well. But but um, it, it all de- it, it really all depends on certain individuals, their past eating experience, their their what they're doing now, their training, their training experience. It's just so many things you've got to take in consideration. This is why, you know, I wouldn't sit here and do one-off plans for people and say this is going to get you shredded. You know, I just don't. I just don't believe in them. But the amount of the amount of emails, the amount of emails I get from people saying, "Can you do me a diet to lose fat?" Well, I can do you a diet that's going to help you start, but then come next week, the week after that, or the week after that various hormones may have down regulated and and you're going to stop you're going to stop losing weight and then you're going to blame me for the diet not working because you're going to yeah, keep yeah. seeing the same the same diet so and i don't want that bad on my name so i i, I probably shouldn't but i just say look no i can't do your one-off plan if you want to start working with me on an online basis then yeah that's cool but as i for a one-off plan yeah i don't believe in them uh, you know no, I, no. I don't believe because they don't they, they don't they only work for they only work so long and that's that's it. And that's, and that's why you get, get the, um, yeah. uh, what's, uh, what's it called, like the, the 12 week magic diet, diets, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So you get the 12 week magic diet book, you follow that for 12 weeks, you lose a bit of weight, and then all of a sudden you keep on following it. And because you've had metabolic adaptation, that's the reason why it obviously stops working. Yes, 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. And then you've got, and then you've got your, you know, your generic, your generic plans. Where um, I mean that's very much like a generic plan, but then you've got your generic plans that that say right here's your start point. Yeah. Here's your start point. Then every single week you're going to drop so many calories and you're going to add, add in so much cardio. Now for the everyday for the everyday person, um, they're going to come to the end. Of, let's say for example they 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 go from Friday to Friday and they've dropped um, two or three pounds, which is which is perfect. But then the but then the but then the the generic plan says you now got to add in cardio. Now you've now got to take away food. Now this dude don't need to do that. Yeah. And then you're going to have even further metabolic adaptation problems. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, in regards to one-off plans, I just I just I just don't do them. And like I says, with different people, um, it is a case of if you want to take your if you want to take your physique to the next level, it, you've got to be managed every single week. Yeah. Got to, you, you've got to be managed every single week because it's so, it's, it is, it is hard and it isn't hard. It, it, when you've got someone telling you, when you've got someone telling you, or looking after, looking after you is the, is a is a word that I I probably should use better. Looking after you in regards to your metabolic and um, 
like you said, your hormones and stuff like that, when people know what they're talking about and they're taking care of them, making sure that they're not putting you too much at risk, then things are a lot things are a lot easier. And, and but if you're not and you're and you're just following all these plans, you're just going to cause yourself so much harm. Um, and yes, okay, it's reversible, but you know you shouldn't be really doing something that you're going to need to sort of irreverse yourself from yeah. damaging yourself. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So in regards to what you just said there about managing somebody every single week, if your natural athlete, for example, came to you and they said, right, I have, um, this is my weekly check-in here are my photos, blah, blah, I've lost um, three pounds this week. Yeah. Now, from my personal experience as a coach myself, I wouldn't make any standard changes from there because they've obviously lost a great deal of weight, obviously depending on how big they are. You know, if they're a 300-pound guy, then, you know, that's... that's Incomprehensible, but yeah. if there's somebody like the size of me, for example, I'm five foot one on a fag din and I weigh, you know, eight stone, for example, um, I wouldn't make any changes. What's your viewpoint on that? Would you, if they are deep into prep, would you just carry on and, and make more changes to, to leave? Well, the, the, first, the first thing I'd do is if someone like yourself uh, came to me, eight stone, uh, sorry, was prepping with me, uh, and then one week, uh, depending on. on Obviously, we're talking about if you've been prepping for a couple of weeks now, right? Because obviously, we yeah, expect yeah. that big drop at the start. Um, but if you came to me and you said, like, Zach, I've, as a female as well, uh, you know, you you just dropped, I've just dropped three pounds, um, three pounds in, in weight, and what do you want me to do? First thing I'd do is ask you how your training's been. Mm. You know, how your training's getting on. Are you getting, uh, you know, are you, are you getting a pump whilst you're training? Mm. You know how long's how long's your pump lasting? Um, how 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 how's your fatigue? Are you feeling tired for the day? How's your hunger? Um, but I'd also I don't just with my clients when they're checking I don't just check their their weight because we all know that that, that scales are sometimes a little bit naughty. Um, and so what I do is I get them to send me measurements um, of their thighs, of their biceps, um, maybe their chest. If obviously a guy. Um, and so for example if someone comes to me and they say look i've lost three pounds and um but their measurements are all still the same as in their arms and thighs i'll be like that is a perfect week okay but what we are going to do is we're going to have a little bit of a, a refeed uh, we're going to have a little bit of refeed get that get that leptin and everything back up again um because from experience and through um what I've read is that obviously things like leptin and that they can drop dramatically, especially in natural athletes from a weekly basis. Like, mm. um, so they, I think, um, uh, anyone who preps for me will know and will tell you that I'm big on uh, refeeding uh, my clients on a weekly basis. Now, whether that comes from um, clean refeed or a cheat meal, it all depends on on where that where that athlete is at at that certain time. Um, and if I feel as if I'm, they need it, sometimes I'll have a clean refeed throughout the day and a cheat meal. It all depends on how low they are, how lean they are. Yeah. Um, um, going back to the question on what would I do with you, like I said, I'll, I'll give you a refeed and make sure that the measurements and everything are in line with what I want. Uh, if you came to me and said, I've lost three pounds, your waist is still the same, but your, your your measurements your measurements are down on your your, your uh, everywhere else. I'd say right, okay, that's a little, we're obviously too we're we're obviously too much in a deficit. Mm, mm. So I may put a little, even though that you've lost three pounds, I may put a little bit of food back in again because we're losing it from the wrong areas. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, that that was be that would be my approach to my my check-ins. Mm, okay. Now, what happens? Let's swap it around. Then, what happens if that comes from an assisted athlete? Let's still say it's take the same scenario. So, still a female, still a small female, but they're an assisted female. So, what would be your thought process on that one? Um, in regards to the measurements, <laughs> you're going to hate me. But in regards to the in regards to the measurements and stuff, uh, that that protocol still still stands. Okay. What, what I do find, what I do find with with an assisted though, you've got more, you've got more. What's the word? You've got more bullets to use. Yeah. You know, you've got you've got more you've got more bullets to use now. Um, for example, you have got the 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 the, the, the fat burners and <laughs> do you know do you know what I mean? You've got more stuff to use. So where is a where is a natural? Um, let's say for if I had to add in more work, 
if I had to add in more work for, or we had to push a little bit harder for a natural, it's either two things. It's rather more output, or we need to take food a little bit. Yeah, yeah. As long as their measurements are, as long as their measurements are in favour of, or depending on what their measurements are. Now, if an assisted uh, athlete comes and says, you know, we, we've got the same scenario, we, we need to do, we need to do a little bit more work, then we've obviously got them, them, um, we've got them more bullets we can use in regards to increasing whatever they're taking, or, or, or. And, and what I do find is with assisted, like I said at the start, they can get away with a hell of a lot more food. Mm. So it might be a case of um, they need refeeding hard. Like, whereas, whereas we do, whereas we do like a, a, a day or a day in a cheat meal for a, for a natural, we may do a two or a three day refeed for, for an assisted. Oh right, to, okay. To 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 push things to push things forward again, drop them calories back down, and let's see if they move forward again. But there is no there is no um, there is no specific protocol that I have on my wall in each scenario. Right. Okay. It's, yeah. a case of, it's a case of the coach knowing what that what that particular person has done for the past six, four, eight, ten weeks. Mm -hmm. What's worked. And then, then, then you decide what we need to do in in, in that moment. Um, mm. I do believe that um, I have got a knack for the eye, looking at a physique and going right. Okay, that's like, I've had I've had clients before as well. They've probably I've probably upset them and they've said, "Oh, I look a little bit flat." No, you're just fat. You've got <laughs> it's not it's not it's not flat. You're you're still a little bit fat and you're holding water from it. Yeah. Um, so. Um, it's a case of as well your coach having a good eye and 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 knowing what's needed because like i.e if a client is holding too much fat still and they've got a lot of work to do it's a case of you not being the nice guy and saying you don't need a refeed <laughs> uh -huh. work a little bit harder well we need to make some changes that's going to make it a little bit harder but then knowing the difference between flat and fat um um if someone's fat, then obviously, yeah, okay, let's put some, let's put some more food back in and get things moving again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting, it's interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of people do think um, um, there is a massive difference between coaching and assisted and a natural athlete. What about training? Would you um, have? I mean, obviously, we were saying that an assisted athlete can train a lot harder and probably for a lot longer as well. But would you use the same kind of setup, uh, like a like a push pull leg split or something, or would you again decide on after looking at the athlete what they've been doing for the last kind of six years or whatever? Would you just change it again? What What's your thoughts on training? Yeah, um, so training. Um, the first thing that the first thing that I do is um, the the volume of training would obviously differ. Mm. You don't want you don't you know you don't want your natural you don't want your natural athlete. Uh, being in the gym for an hour and a half, you know, pounding the weights for an hour and a half. Um, because you've got that, because the second point I was going to make is, is them stress levels. And what is, what is them, what is that, what is that training session doing to that individual? And we're all, everyone who I've prepped anyway, um, I've never prepped someone who solely does bodybuilding. We've all got jobs on the outside. So um, with that training, say for a natural athlete being in that being in that um the environment of the gym you know pounding them pounding them weights for an hour and a half plus their job um let's say they're a <laughs> let's say they're a laborer yeah you know, it is a that's got a lot of work a lot of work and stress is probably one of the biggest things we we want to stay away from especially whilst prepping because if you've ever prepped yourself Vicky, it's not a nice thing it's uh, when 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 that when that stress starts starts coming in, so you've got stress from the environment of work, you've got stress from the from the from the from the environment of, of training, and then you've got stress from the the the, the competition that you're about to enter. Um, yeah. It all adds up to to a big cross because it's going to have such a negative impact on um, your physique um, from in regards to holding water again, and then you'll have your clients saying. You know, oh, I'm feeling really flat. I'm like, you're not. You're just stressed. Mm. Relax a little bit. Take a couple of days off training. Put your feet up. Uh, take the family away or whatever, and, and try and try and get your mojo back a little bit. Um, and I've I've found on a couple of people before that's worked really really well. Um, one of my athletes, Juggy Juggy Sidhu, 
he's very one. He's one for uh, st over over stressing himself. Um, and there's a couple of times where I've had to say, look, you need to go and take yourself away, take the family away. He's come back, and it's and it's like I've trained with him, and he's like, I'm like, bro, your physique is totally different now. It looks totally different. So I'm a big believer in that sort of things, them sort of things. Um, apart from that, I, you know, most of my clients are on Y three T plans. I do do I do, do I do do I do do um, different I do do different plans. But the majority, I'd say, seventy to eighty percent of my clients do Y three T. It keeps things interesting. It keeps things different on a weekly basis. Because um, again, I have I have found from experience, um, assisted and unassisted, we're all the same. We're the, the, all the same person. Um, when I give someone a workout plan to follow, if it's just one that's the same every single week, even if it's even if it's that even if it's down to a point where um, I'm just adding a little bit more volume every single week, you know, the whole, the, the whole progressive overload, um, et cetera, which is obviously beneficial, but people get bored of training the yeah. same the same exercises all the time. So I think Y3T, it allows that change every single week. Um, you know, you, you low rep range, your medium rep range, your, your, your how week I like to call it when you're doing um, – 45 55 65 up to 80 reps per set um yeah it's it's, it's pretty pretty horrible again cardio, isn't it? yeah exactly but again <laughs> again touching on um touching on the um the style of training when people are getting closer towards the the end of the prep would i do week three with them probably not because it's going to cause a lot of stress mm. it, it's going to take a lot of recovery um so um again from a from a coach point of view you've got to sort of look where it's not always about kill 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 in the gym sometimes just take it back a little bit these guys these girls are in a big deficit do they want to be pounding it all the time and mm. but from experience um the answer is definitely no um sometimes their physique would massively benefit from just taking a bit of a step back for for, for a week for training and they'll come out the other end looking a hell of a lot better. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Okay, cool. So another thing that I wanted to talk to you about really is, then is um, nutrition. How do you like to do your nutrition? Do you like to give standardized meal plans to your athletes or do you give them macro breakdowns? Um, I I can't remember the, the – at the minute I think I've got one female client who um, she used to do If It Fits Your Macros, okay. uh, which is cool. Um, I do believe that works for for bikini for bikini girls because they don't that we're in this perceptive where uh perspective that um is that the word I'm looking for yeah um yeah. That, that um bikini girls need to be like shredded yeah they like, really don't no they 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 don't they, they 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 don't and um i like giving my um my clients um bikini clients saying look here's your macros Let's 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 do this for a while. It, it just do whatever whatever foods you like. Let's 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 do them. When we need to tie it up at the end, and I mean in regards to tying it up at the end, is the fact that I want to know what certain foods are doing to uh, their digestive system. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So and and that is the only reason I'd switch to set meal plans mm. because I want to know. I want to know if any certain foods are giving them, uh, you know, bloating problems in the midsection, or if, if certain foods are making them feel tired. Or, um, but in regards to, uh, you know, what foods can, what could, you know, gone off question, but what foods can we eat? You know, I always say the same thing: keep the foods wholesome, keep the foods wholesome, and minimally, minimally po as processed as possible. Yeah. Um, and and sometimes and that's a question I ask with my clients from the start when I'm setting up their nutrition plan. What foods don't you like? Mm. Because they're foods that aren't going to be in the diet. I don't want to put um, someone on buddy. I don't know avocado in every single meal if if they hate avocado because they're not going to stick to the plan. So um, I do say if you've got a prep coach and he hasn't asked that question, what foods don't you like? Then he should be, <laughs> yeah. you know, ask questions because there's a good chance you're having a generic plan. Um, um, and I've seen it before, you know, 
I've seen it before. I've had clients from different coaches, and they've, they've come to me, and I'm like, um, the, the fir- their first thing is, you know, I really don't like this food that they've given me, blah, blah. Well, why don't you tell them? Yeah, exactly. You know, sometimes don't blame, just blame the coach. It's a, it's a two-way thing. It's like, you should have said, I don't like that food. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I set up uh, nutrition plans. But majority of them, um, Vicky, they are set plans after they've, after they've told me the foods that they like. Right, yeah. Because of that reason, because we are, um, again, this is from, from, from my coach, uh, and I truly believe it, you know, it's not what we eat, it's what we can digest. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I found the same thing myself when I was um, flexibly dieting to a certain degree and I was just having exactly what I wanted. I was getting a lot of gastric distress. But the problem is, is because my diet was so varied and I had such a big influx of different nutritional things from everywhere, I couldn't quite pinpoint what it was that was causing that distress. So obviously if you carry that on, um, especially in the last kind of four weeks, not only are you just going to build up more of an intolerance to that one item that you don't know what it is, yeah. but in the last four weeks, you're going to look dreadful and feel dreadful for it as well, aren't you, in the last last few weeks of prep? Of course. Of course. And, it's, and, 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 at, that, and at that point, it's, uh, it's, it is too late to be messing, and, messing around with things, you know, because not only is it, you know, yes, it's going to be detrimental on your physique if you're not feeling great and it's making you feel awful but we're going to see we're going to see that we're going to see that on your physique and and if we start trying to take out foods we might be getting the wrong foods which might be even putting more your your physique more of a um in a a bad in a bad place Mm. and then you're going to be looking at white fish and broccoli for the for the remainder of your prep that that is standard and i'm i'm just moving around because i've just realized that my battery on my mac is uh nearly up <laughs> so there you are youtubers we actually have an insight into zach's house as well this is now an episode of cribs <laughs> it's all good it's cool ah oh, that was sweet <laughs> definitely an episode of cribs that well, was quite okay. quiet then don't we eh? Yeah, we're up we're up we're up we're up okay awesome um okay cool so um looking at your y3t training what got you into that apart from the fact that it's keeping training interesting for your clients was there anything else that particularly drew you to that was that what neil had you on to begin with yeah yeah so when i was working with um when i was when i started working with neil i i actually let me tell you about how i uh, met neil oh. um so um, I was working in India. Um, I was I was personal training a Bollywood actor. Oh, right, cool. Um, a minute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> God, like it. This is an odd. I'm not going to edit this out, by the way, because this is just going to be the comedic part of it. We should we should tell we should tell everyone how how long it took us to uh, to get on the call. Oh yeah, that was interesting. That was comedy in itself, wasn't it? Like nearly forty-five, maybe fifty minutes, just trying to find out how we could actually talk. It was quite hilarious. <laughs> um, just for everyone that's listening, it was my fault. Okay, <laughs> I'm useless. I'm, I'm useless with technology. Funny. Anyway, carry on. So, uh, prepping a Bollywood actor. Yeah, I was prepping a, a Bollywood actor for for a movie, and uh, Neil was doing the same uh, whilst he was out there, and we were both working for. Um, the same agents and I think it was um yeah it's me I reached out to Neil and says you know are you are you local because obviously I didn't know didn't know India at all I was like are you anywhere closer to where I am um and he was something like an hour away on the plane okay so um when I had the weekend off I I got my got my uh, actor to, I said look this is what you need to do over the weekend I'm going away for the weekend um I went and saw Neil and when I went to see Neil straight away, obviously we clicked as friends. And when I got back to the UK, I, I think I got back just before him. And when I come back, that's when I decided I was going to start start uh, bodybuilding. Um, so I got in touch with Neil and says, "Look, would you would you prep me?" I was like, "Of course I would." So um, by then I would I'd already done uh, the Y three T. Trainer course, okay. So I already had, a, I already had an insight of um, what Y three T was, um, but straight away, as soon as I started prepping with Neil, I said, you know, shall I follow the Y three T protocol? Um, he was like, oh, hundred percent. 
Um, he gave me my guidelines, gave me my, um, you know, what's, you know, sort of sets and reps and, and, and what I want to be doing um, at the start of the prep, which changed throughout the prep. Um, and yeah, so I, so I cracked on then. And, and what, like I said, what I loved about it is the fact that, you know, and I'm not one of these people that preaches something and doesn't do it himself. I generally love Y three T. I generally love training Y the you know the the, the protocol of Y three T because I just love I just love the variety. Mm. I do. I just love the variety. And what I have what I have found is I have found it's it's benefitly like massively benefited my physique um, because of the science behind it. Because of the the tapping into your different muscle fibers, your fast and your slow twitch from from hitting various rep ranges. Hitting your, hitting, your, hitting, your, hitting your different energy systems mm. um i just it just gives me a great buzz when i'm doing it and like i said um the last three years my physique has gone from um playing uh playing football do a bit of footballer's physique to a, a, a good amateur a good amateur men's physique uh, it's it's i've probably put on i think my first comp you know, I think I think I've put on about you know ten to twelve pounds within 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 two years, two and a half years, which is which is yeah okay. It might not seem a lot to people, but I see it a lot in my physique. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I see it a lot in my physique. So, um, I do believe that the Y three T protocol can massively tap into to, and it's for everyone really. And we're not just talking people who are prepping. This is somewhat people with, with lifestyles, you know, lifestyle training can do this because, like I says, it keeps it interesting, um, and it, it, it and you can scope for example with with the training as well. Um, people think that you've got to do week one, week two, week three, then cycle again. No, you, there's you, you've got to work out what's best for but what's best for certain people. Um, for example, I've got clients that respond better to week one. I've got clients that respond better. For week two and i've got clients that respond great from week three so what i if someone um uh responds better from week one because they're they're genetically um got a lot more fast twitch fibers um then i'm going to go right okay do week one for three weeks okay then you're going to do week two and then you're going to do week three and then you're going to cycle through again does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Again, you're making it individual to the clients, aren't you? Rather than just giving them um, yeah. an off-the-shelf plan. Yeah, yeah. So, but like, a lot of people will say, you know, is it, you know, why three? Two, is it just week one, week two, week three? No, it's it's if you've got a good coach, then they're going to find out what's working best for you, and then you're going to then then it's going to be it's going to be uh, manipulated a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really interesting. I really like that. It's good. Okay, awesome. So we're just about going to come up on time as well here, Zach. Um, one thing I did want to ask you actually was that have you actually changed the way that you've done things over the years that you've been a um, physique coach and a prep coach? So were you ever one of those old school bros and then you turned into the science the science geeks, do you uh, say? Yeah. 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 I think all when, of us were, weren't we, at one point? I'll tell you when it was. It was when I was, before I went to India, it was um, when I, I think India opened my eyes up to a lot of things, being out there with Neil and Chris Gethin. Mm. Um, it opened my eyes, up, my, my eyes up to a lot. But before that, you know, I was the one, the personal trainer that used to say, you know, you've got to eat chicken and broccoli yeah. and, and, a bit of, and a bit of rice like five, six times a day. Um, I remember once when I first, I remember once when I first started out, um i put on my um my facebook i think it was about oh god it, it was a it was yeah it was one of the, it was definitely about a year after starting out as a personal trainer after leaving the army i, I put um that um eating six meals a day speeds your metabolism up. <laughs> yeah that old one <laughs> And then, and then someone piped up and says oh that's total blah 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 and i was like no it ain't it's right <laughs> And then I looked at it and thought, oh, my God, I'll take that post down. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's funny, isn't it? I actually like recycling the old ones like that and then actually put in a big, like, you know, one of those big surprise emoji faces going, holy shit, as if I actually said that a few years ago. And you know what? And you know what? It's, um, and that's an, another topic to talk about is is the fact that um, I, think, I think people, us as coaches nowadays, um, 
we we hit on them people too much. Mm. Like like it's like someone might put a post up on Facebook. Now, okay, it's not good to give the wrong information out on on social media and stuff like that. But there's too many people out there that when people do do that, they're on them as if they've just like done the worst thing they could ever do in life. Yeah, yeah. And it's not the fact that they've meant to do it wrong. They're just uneducated. They just need educating a little bit. And I like listening. I like listening to to people like uh, your Brad Chofield and and your um, Alan Aragon. Mm. I like them sort. I like them sort of people because I was speaking to a friend the other day who's all, uh, who's a, who's a, who's an athlete and who does uh, men's physique. And I was saying to him what I was reading because I I was reading uh, the Ling Muscle Diet from Alan Aragon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A great book um, for anyone to read from starters, or even if you, you know, even if you've been at it for a while, it's always good to refresh. Mm. Um, but I was saying to him, you know, you know, I'm reading this at the minute, um, Alan Ar- from Alan Aragon, and it, it says, uh, "What I like about the, and I hope you don't take it the wrong way, but the old timers, yeah, um, is they, the, 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 the people nowadays who are teaching us, they were taught by these people." Yeah, but the people of today is almost as if they've got chips on their shoulders, and they're trying to 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 belittle the the, the up and coming coaches or the up and coming personal trainers, and and so I prefer I prefer learning from 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 the from the generation before the generation now, yeah. uh, because like I said, uh, we, we we come on too hard. We, it, we, if I ever see anyone who's put anything wrong on social media, because I've been that guy before, you know. I wouldn't even comment on their their post. I'd be private messaging them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's not good to make someone look small, and 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 you know, just say to them, look, check out this research or check out that. Have a have a good read for yourself before uh, before you, you know, if you, if that's still your opinion when you're finished reading that, then you're a tool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, like, then I'll then I'll publicly criticise you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, but what I want to, you know, give them, give them that, ch- give them that chance first. That's obviously off the topic of what we were talking about. But I do think that um, that, that that needs to be um, addressed. Definitely, to- yeah, absolutely. And I think that's it. We're all in the same industry together, aren't we? And it's it's about maintaining relationships.